Welcome back to Google Developers Live at I.O. I'm Louis Gray. I'm joined here with John Hankey from the Niantic Project. Welcome, John. Thank you. Now, the Niantic Project actually is really cool. I know you guys have a couple of uh, games that are out there. You've got uh, Project Ingress, and you have a Field Trip, which isn't so much a game, but both of them are really tied to discovering the world around you. So I want a couple questions to start us off. First of all, what is the Niantic Project? It is part of Google, right? Well, uh, we, we try to keep it a little bit mysterious, but uh, yes, it is part of Google. We're kind of like a little startup in Google, and uh, I guess the goal of the, of the Niantic uh, group is to explore these kinds of applications in mobile that use location and explore this area of ubiquitous computing, mm -hmm. uh, things that are telling you about the world around you, uh, helping you explore. Uh, but without necessarily um, using an app in kind of a conventional sense. Now, you have a his history of working with startups anyway. I mean, you came from Keyhole with the Google acquisition of Keyhole. It really became kind of the backbone of Google Earth and a lot of the other work that we've done. Mm -hmm. It really seems you have a passion for maps. Help us understand how both of those projects, you know, Ingress and Field Trip put together, are helping Google's location information get better or helping users know more about their world. Yeah, I mean, I love maps. Obviously, I came in in 2004 with, uh, with Keyhole and uh, was the product lead for that part of Google for about seven years. During that time, you know, I used to daydream about other things that we could do with the mapping data and the resources. And one of those things was a game, you know, and as uh, smartphones started pro to proliferate, you know, I felt like the time was right to tap into all of the, the mapping data that we have and to, to, to create an awesome game. Uh, for mobile that would encourage people to really get out and explore their world. And that's really kind of the spirit behind both Ingress and Field Trip. So let's talk a little bit about Ingress. What is the deal anyway? Uh, you know, for those who haven't played it, how do you describe it? And what's the difference between the resistance and the enlightened, for those who don't know? <laughs> well, um, I mean, the story behind Ingress is, uh, you know, it's a science fiction themed story that really puts a layer of reality onto the world around you. So um, there's a mysterious energy that's been tapped into in a lab in Geneva, Switzerland. And through the story of Ingress, you begin to learn a little bit more about that energy. It's called exotic matter in our world. And as it turns out, it's all around the globe. And it's concentrated in these places called portals, mm -hmm. which often are pieces of public art or museums or historical sites. And you use the Ingress application on your Android phone to discover those places in the real world and then to tap into them. And you can mine virtual objects, you can interact with them, and you can try to take control of those locations for one of two factions, one of the, the enlightened and, and the resistance. And so as a player, you know, you basically you pick a team and you go find these portals and you have to like blow them up and use up your XM energy and all of that. Uh -huh. Now, poor me, I find myself often trying to take my level three or level four skills. I just can't blow up a level eight portal. Uh, when you look at Ingress, is there room for the novice player who's just starting it now or wants to get into it? Or have all the places basically been locked down by the hardcore players? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely room. One of the things that we didn't expect with Ingress was how much teamwork and collaboration would end up emerging. But we found that people really love getting together and playing in groups and having meetups. Uh, we're having one here in San Francisco this week, but we have them all around the country, all around the world. So it's a great way for a new player to kind of get into the game, would be to meet up with other Ingress players. And you know, some of the more senior players really love taking a newbie under their wing and showing them the ropes and also helping them level up in the game and become powerful enough to start affecting the, the real global battle. And you have something special going on here at Google I.O., is that right? Yeah, there's kind of a game within a game. So we're doing two things. We're doing uh, Operation Fan Out, which is all I.O. attendees are able to take part in that. And if you level up during I.O., you get a really cool Ingress t-shirt. Uh, if you show up as a level eight already, we have a special level eight t-shirt for you. And we have another thing that's open to non-IO attendees as well. It's called Operation Bowstring. And um, that's being played out across San Francisco, and it culminates an event on Thursday night uh, at Cupid Span, which is down on the Embarcadero, with a meetup over at the Alchemist uh, bar later. Now, Ingress right now is Android only. Uh, Field Trip is available for both Android and iOS. Mm -hmm. How do you see that the users of the different operating systems use the apps differently? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, if you were to look at Field Trip, it's available for iOS and for Android. Uh, it's rolling out globally today, actually. Initially, it was a US-only launch and then the UK. Uh, there are subtle differences. I mean, we've noticed that Android users tend to spike on the weekends. Uh, and they're out using and so maybe exploring more than their iOS counterparts. I don't know if that means that you know, Android users are you know, more, uh, 
are more into exploration than iOS users, but yeah, there are small differences. Should we expect to see even more products coming out of Niantic Project? Well, you never know. I mean, uh, we are looking at a you know, range of technologies in this mobile space. Uh, we're very interested in wearable computing and what you can do with it. Uh, but the things that we're putting all of our energies behind right now are ingress and field trip. So I should expect to have ingress on my glass like any day now is what I'm hearing. Well, you know, I think that uh, I think glass would make an excellent platform for some awesome uh, games. So, uh, you know, we'll see about that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one last question before we wrap. Uh, Niantic Project, as a startup at Google, do you have more freedom to do more things? Like, what does that mean to be within Google, but also be within this tiny little enclave? You know, it was a great opportunity. Uh, it was set up by, you know, with Larry's support uh, so that we could pursue this area and, um, you know, across kind of ideas and concepts from mobile to social to geo and try to weave those things together in new ways to explore what could be done to uh, create apps that were really native to kind of the new wave of devices that, that will be coming, you know, wearables. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, John. I know we've been real quick uh, jumping into Ingress and Field Trip. Uh, for those of you who haven't downloaded those apps already, definitely check them out. Uh, we have more exclusive GDL at I.O. content coming. Uh, we'll be talking about Google, no with, uh, Google Now uh, with Barry School Taken at uh, 325. So please stay on the streams and enjoy your sessions. We'll be right back.